Our top story, the civil rights attorneys representing the family of Derek Kitling following the 45-year-old's death at the hands of a Rapids Parish Sheriff's Office deputy are responding to footage released of the deadly traffic stop. Alex Ornchuk is in the studio with the latest details. Alex? That's right. Yesterday was the first time we were able to see the footage of the traffic stop, giving us some insight into Derek Kitling's final moments. We'll show you some of that footage in a moment, but first we will hear from civil rights attorney Ron Haley, who is representing the Kitling family alongside Ben Crump. Haley claims that the footage shows the deputy is the one who escalated the situation, leading to the death of Derek Kitling. This situation was provoked solely by Deputy Anderson. It wasn't even a situation to de-escalate. It wasn't even a situation that called for that. It, it called for common sense. It called for some basic manners. It called for basic instruction. And listen, I understand that Deputy Anderson is a, is a young officer, but he has seven years of experience. Seven years of experience. And, and, and this is the result of, of that experience? I mean, this was, this was ridiculous. Crump shared in part, quote, this confirms what we had suspected from our initial review of the facts. Derek's killing was unwarranted and completely, un completely preventable. We believe that Deputy Rodney Anderson profiled Derek from the moment he initiated this out-of-jurisdiction traffic stop for window tint in a modified exhaust. The footage from the stop came yesterday when Louisiana State Police Superintendent Colonel Lamar Davis was in Alexandria sharing body and dashboard camera video from the deputy as well as one video from a bystander who recorded the incident. For those that haven't seen the footage, we're going to replay it now, but we want to warn you this video may be considered disturbing to some viewers. Hey, right there. Right here, to the truck. At 1.18 p.m., the RPSO deputy, now identified as Rodney Anderson, pulled Kitling over. And just three minutes later, at 1.21, Kitling was dead. The video shows that when Kitling is stopped, he gets out of his truck. From there, Deputy Anderson gives Kitling multiple commands. To the back of your truck, show me, keep your hands out your pockets. Put them on the, walk to the back of your truck. When Kitling complies, he's approached by the deputy behind the vehicle. Here's what's said between Kitling and Deputy Anderson. Take the truck. Huh? What's the issue? Because you act, you agitate, you turn around, you ain't following uh, nothing. I am following. Look, I, turn. I don't hear you. Turn. Can I get my phone, sir? Uh, we'll get to that. Just turn and face the truck. Turn and, turn and face, face the truck. What I, I did. Face the truck. Kitling asks why he was pulled over. Deputy Anderson does not ever reveal why during the stop, but state police shared this during its briefing. The officer reportedly pulled Mr. Kitling over for a um, violation with this window tent and modified exhaust. Back to the video where the confrontation escalates. What is wrong with you? Why is you grabbing truck. on me, man? Give me a unit. Why are you Face grabbing on me, truck. bro? Turn around and put your hands behind your back. At this point, Deputy Anderson is holding both of Kitling's arms until he reaches for his taser. That's when Kitling grabs the deputy's arm that's holding the taser and also reaches around Deputy Anderson's back with both men falling to the ground. From here, it's difficult to piece together exactly what happened, but according to the state police's description of the incident before this footage was played, quote, during the struggle, the deputy removed his taser from his left side and lost control of it. While the taser was on the ground, Kitling was able to retrieve the taser, end quote. A lot happens before Deputy Anderson loses control of the taser, though. Let's break it down. As soon as the pair is going to the ground, you can hear the sound of the taser deploying. At this point in the video, the taser is still in Deputy Anderson's hand and you can see the taser wires indicating the taser has been fired. But was anyone hit when the taser deployed? Here's what Colonel Davis had to say. Was Kitling actually tased before he was shot? Uh, actually, we are in the process of determining that. We can't say for certain that he was actually tased or whether the officer were tased. As the struggle continues, Deputy Anderson let go of the taser. It's then that Kitling picks up the taser and the device again starts going off. Just last week, attorneys for the Kitling family called into question if Kitling having control of the taser was a threat since the taser had already been fired. Colonel Davis says investigators are still looking into this. It reports that once those probes go out that that particular taser is no longer effective and uh, we need to verify the capabilities of those uh, devices with the manufacturer. To give perspective, from this bystander video recording during the incident, you can see at this point of the struggle, Kitling is on top of Deputy Anderson. That's until the deputy pulls out his gun, shown here, and shoots Kitling in the head. While this footage has been released, LSP shared that its investigation is still ongoing. Trust fired! Trust fired! There is no, quite frankly, 
best case scenario when you have to draw your weapon and when you have to use your weapon. So it's important for us to understand that, you know, this was during the struggle and during that struggle, then that's what occurred and we're trying to get down to the bottom of that. There's no word on when the next update on the case will be, but once LSP's investigation is complete, final reports from state police will be turned over to the Rapids Parish District Attorney's Office for review. Back to you. Good morning, you're on Talkback. Hey, Big Al and Trish, how y'all doing there this morning? Good, sir. How are you? Look, great discussion. Everybody's hitting it on the right head, and you and Trish are hitting it on the right head. Being a military police officer, the first thing I would have done, because we, we have a motto in the military police, we're of the troops and for the troops. Mm -hmm. First, you tell the guy why you pulled him over. Show respect to the citizen, too, yeah. and say, well, hey, I pulled you over because we're looking for these guys with magazines, or your muffler sounds like a gunshot, or something like that. Mm -hmm. Tell the guy what you pulled him over for, and, and then, now, if he gets upset or tries to do something but that Marksville guy was sort of right. As black parents, when I was taught, I don't know if y'all ever heard of the talk. Our parents used to tell us, especially because there were more white officers back then, more like Klan and stuff like that and the police forces and stuff. Yeah. Look, they said, do whatever that officer tells you to do. And we'll deal with whatever after that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But like he said from Marksville, these parents are telling these kids, oh, you free to do whatever you want to do or, you know, and it, it's just wrong. Yeah. Parents, like I said, they're trying to be too much friends with the kids and stuff, and they're not being parents like they should. And there, there's just no discipline. But... I wish police off and he seemed like he was a young officer. He didn't seem like he was a veteran or anything. Because like I said, I would approach this situation like I said, well, mister, I pulled you over because we are looking for these kids with these magazines and your muffler or whatever sounds like a gunshot or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this is why I pulled you over. But I want to say something about Dave's right and you're right and Trish. These people like Benjamin Crump and Al Sharpton and all the rest of them, they want to divide the country and create chaos. I, I, I just wish the sheriff, and um, I, I know it takes time for investigations, but when you put the stuff out there first with all the videos and stuff, I, to me, like I said, being a military police officer, I would have put that stuff out within two or three days and say, well, look, this is what happened. This is the situation. Not wait two weeks, because, see, all that stuff builds tension. You got one radio man talking about, you know, trying to gin up the community to do something and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that, that's just wrong. Mm -hmm. And that, that's what divides the community, too. And I try to tell one of my white friends what it's like to be black, and he doesn't, he doesn't understand. Right. And I... I like you were saying, uh, the black caller used to call the show. I don't know if he's still alive or not. When Bob Madison was there, he was driving while black. He would be pulled over just because he was black. Right, right. And that's wrong. Right. But we have more black officers now, and we need more black officers. And I tried to tell another white friend of mine that, too. But he says, oh, no, it doesn't matter what color the officers are. I said, it, it does to a certain extent. Because everybody understands wherever they came from. White or black, you understand wherever you came from. Sure. I, and I, I appreciate the points you're making. Um, you know, I think even for sometimes the black officers, they still endure the same treatment. Uh, right. You know, probably... That's another thing. They, in the community, just like you said, Big Al, about the music. Oh, well, you're a traitor, you're a sellout. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a Republican, too. Uh, the Democrats that are black, oh, you're a sellout, you're a traitor because you're Republican and conservative. Well, that's fine. But I know what the Democratic Party did to uh, black folks and what they wanted. They wanted to keep slavery and stuff. They didn't stop slavery till the Civil War. 
I just wish Reconstruction had went the way it was supposed to go, but it didn't, and it took another 100 years for things to try to work out right. Cornelius, thank you for the call. We appreciate right, thank it. Thank you. We need to take a break. we got some more callers on the line. If you can hold, we'll come to you right after this.